This case was heard by the Court of Exchequer in 1584, the time of Queen Elizabeth I and just a handful of years before Shakespeare's first great plays. This was a time of great political conflict between the Church and the Crown. Elizabeth's father, Henry VIII, had cast out the Catholic Church and declared himself head of the Church of England. Her older sister Mary had returned England to Catholicism. Elizabeth herself threw it out again before ultimately settling on a compromise. Much of these disputes had to do not with religion, but with power and wealth, in particular the wealth of land. The church, you see, controlled a lot of the land in England, and the Parliament, led by the Crown, wanted to get a lot of it back. They passed an act called the Suppression of Religious Houses Act, which transferred a great deal of land back to the Crown. Hayden's case considered whether a particular parcel of land had passed to the Crown by considering how the legislation operated on an ancient form of land title called copyhold title. The court therefore had to consider the proper way for courts to read and interpret legislation, and it established in this case what is known as the mischief rule. The mischief rule says that when interpreting a statute, the role of the court is to try to determine what mischief or what problem the Parliament was trying to resolve, and what means the Parliament was trying to use to resolve that problem. And then the court should interpret the statute in a way that assists the Parliament to resolve that problem by its chosen means. As the court put it, what was the common law before the making of the Act? What was the mischief and defect for which the common law did not provide? What remedy the Parliament hath resolved to cure the disease? then the office of all the judges is always to make such construction as will suppress the mischief and advance the remedy and add force and life to the cure and remedy according to the true intent of the makers of the act. The mischief rule required courts to look beyond the mere words of the statute and to identify and support the Parliament's intention. This rule led to the purposive approach to statutory interpretation, which we continue to use in Australia today.